Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? I hope you're ready to absorb some of that knowledge. Welcome back. If you've been here for more than a few months, you might recall my old How to Attack on Horizon Lunar Colony video, but of course the map has seen some very serious changes both in terms of aesthetic and strategy. This video suggestion came in from a big fan of the channel, Henroko, and to show my appreciation for the big support shown by them, here we are. That being said, if you want your own video suggestions to be known, let me know in the comments section right down below. So, of course, I want to keep you guys updated on how to attack on one of the hardest to tackle 2CP maps in the game. It is possible to get it done with efficiency and coordination, but I'm going to show you sort of the shortcuts or the best routes to move a team to get that sweet W. So, let's hop right into the game. Hey hello there gentlemen, I hope you are enjoying the video so far, and welcome to the new Horizon Lunar Colony. Well, I did cover this map a little while ago, and as I believe I previously mentioned, this is a suggestion coming in from a very dedicated friend of the channel by the name of Henroko. Thank you very much for this suggestion coming back to this map, and we're going to figure out what is the best way to attack and possibly defend. Actually, no, I don't think we're going to be doing defending today, because really the most trouble comes on the attacking side, typically for 2CP maps. Most of the time, people generally sort of dislike the fact that on defense, you are much, much easier to get back and defend a point on 2CP. So we're going to help you attack and figure out what to do. Now, of course, there are several, several routes, and a lot of them have changed since the last video. <clears throat> Now, I don't think up to, I think up to these points, maybe up to there and up to there, right along this line right here, basically nothing on this side has changed at all. I believe at least. Maybe there were some aesthetic things, like I believe this sort of pipe here is brand new. I don't think that was there before. But yeah, most of the things that have changed on this side have been just completely aesthetic, if anything at all. Now, other than that, Let's hop right into it. So, 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 there were a couple of things that I knew, well, nah, that I know just don't work anymore. So essentially, one of the things I'm pretty sure was that, yes, you could go through this way. I believe I didn't really recommend it considering Drankarat can tear you apart, but look at this. There is really just no easy way to get through this area to get it done, really. I mean, you can't go through here, so you'd have to go out here, and then that's a lot of damage you can take. Teams typically stay up on the high grounds with the new cover here, so it's a lot easier for them to last up there longer. So generally, people will stay up on the high ground more. Going through here, it's unnecessary damage just to hop through here. And then you've taken the damage, and it's a lot harder for you to get through. Now, of course, one of the strategies still does have a little bit of weight. If we take a look back over here, where if you start over here, bring your team up through here, and then across, of course, this is still technically a viable strategy. The only difference between this time and last time, the differences between the maps, is that this definitely does create a huge impact. There is a possibility for the enemy team to try and engage you, of course, even if you are on the high ground. But then again, a lot of teams generally do stay on the high ground here now more than ever. Alright, so if you do decide to do that option where you go back, or you go up around through here, and then across over here, you can still technically do go down through here, and in fact, I would encourage some um, high DPS players, or like D DPS players with a lot of like burst damage, like Junkrat would stand right here. Of course, you can lob bombs in through here, so it's a pretty good area for him to stand if the enemy is sort of on the point there. So yeah, that's still a good place for Junkrat and such. But for an entire team engagement, it's not really the best option, just like it was before. Or not just like it was before, as it was before. It's not a good option anymore. And if we take a look over here, they changed this as well. We're going through here, you can no longer pop out on the other side. So I think in some ways this has definitely made the map harder, and it's definitely made the map easier to attack in some ways as well. So, in ways that it is harder, you cannot sort of hide your way in there, or hide yourself in there to regroup as much as you could before. Well, I mean, technically you can, but at the same time you can't You can't go in through here, sort of group yourselves up, get yourself ready to engage through here. You have to go back out, and by then, well, 
you already know what I'm going to say, so. Alright, so the question remains, how do we even attack this map? Well, I'm going to tell you how. Alright. So, these areas haven't changed, but this area, having been changed the way it is, only has one other option to go through. And this, I think, might be either the sneakiest or just sort of generally the best way to get through. Ryan Shield or Lucio and some fast tanks, make your way up here because I'm going through here. Once you reach the high ground, generally other teams are also on the high ground. As you're walking through here, that's a lot of free damage. If they have a Junkrat, though, it's not necessarily concentrated damage that can really hit you with that wide open area, but it's a lot of damage from the rest of the team. However, if there is a burst damage, walking through here might not be a great option. But other than that, going through here is probably your best option to go through entirely. I'm, no, I'm not even sure how I'm going to get the, the thumbnail done of this. <laughs> where it's like, oh, I'm going to take a picture of like this or something, where it's like, go through in here and then back up and... Okay, yeah, I can figure it out, but anyways. Going up onto the top here is probably your best option. If you want, you can jump down, down to there, and then onto the point. Or if you want, you can jump down, make your way down here, and then use this sort of as cover as you sort of slowly advance your way in. By the way, hands down, 10 out of 10, I would 100% suggest going through here, up the stairwell, up into here. And of course, on the contrary, if there's a junk rat, and the old strategy does work almost as well, just not quite as well. So, you can make your way up here, even if you wanted to, you could go through the space, space doors, even though these don't really see much use and aren't as effective as just about any other strategy in the game, but of course it exists here, I guess, I mean, you can use it if you want to, it's not as good as the other options, but, yeah, that's how you are supposed to really get to the point, that way, that way, you can jump down from either of the three sides that you really want to choose to, uh, choose to jump down from, but really, you should be jumping down from one part of the high ground, that's really... Also, why it's been reworked to have more use, both both on defending and the attacking side. All right, so that's point one. Assuming you've taken point one, welcome to point two, where everything has sort of changed a little bit and things look very, very interesting. Now, of course, you have your potato farms over here. Hello, potatoes from the Martian. That was a that was a great movie. Of course, we are on the moon and they're growing potatoes. But anyways. Right, so, this sort of path here doesn't really tell you which way you should be going. Of course, this is all just purely aesthetic. It looks nice and stuff, doesn't it? But it's not supposed to tell you where to go. You still have your several, several different options here, which don't make sense for an actual moon base, but hey, it's, uh, it's easy for strategic purposes, I guess. Right, so, one of the things you might have noticed is that this is a little bit more closed on this area, and this feels a lot more open, but at the same time, it does have this little bit of a closed area here. If you make it here, this is basically, this is the, this is the promised land. You stand here, you regroup a whole lot easier, you can make a way down the stairs. And down here, of course it might not be a great option since you are really, really confined in this area. But at the same time, it might be one of your better options. Of course, as always, you have to make sure, and Widowmakers. makers, any sort of like Torbjorn turrets, those will be a problem for you over this area. They did rework this area so that it's easier for Torbjorn to set his turret down. And he's going to be re getting a rework in the future. And assuming this map is still untouched then as well, that's going to be a little bit of a problem for you to look at as well. So previously you needed a May wall to boost up any sort of Torbjorn or any sort of anyone who didn't have an ability to get up here. So Widowmaker could get up here, but Soldier per se would have to get a May wall boost up and so did Torbjorn. But now they can easily walk their way up and in fact it's much easier to get to from spawn. So even a defending strategy would be instead of walking out here onto the point, if there is someone already at a point, it might be better just to grab the high ground to get the free damage off and then go to contest. But we're on the attack side right now, so let's figure out what we need to do. Right, so if you're going to be attacking from this area you make your way out along here this is a very very exposing area dear god like you used to have the post here it's not even there anymore diva bombs can hit you easier but that's upset the point if you make it along here the same sort of principle applies to your iron shield if it's at a quarter is when you should drop it down and hop down or if it's at a quarter you can stand over here and try to defend yourself as much as possible 
Of course, it's not great to stand here if you have a giant, you know, entire team here. When your best officers would be good down here and use sort of this as a little bit of cover, if not a whole lot. But having this high ground is important to fight with your hit scans or other DPS on your team. Maybe not Genji. Maybe not close range DPS. The so Reaper is not a good option to stay here with. And maybe Genji is not a good option to stay here with. Junkrat is 100% the best option, as well as Soldier and maybe Widowmaker if you are doing Attack Widowmaker, but that's, you know, that's debatable. Kind of debatable, but anyways, yeah. Ryan Shield, if it gets down to a quarter, hop down and start fighting. Now, you might have noticed some changes. I think the only really big change is just the aesthetics here. I'm trying to imagine what else really has made a difference here. Uh, I think... I think this rover has definitely been here the entire time. Health pack's still there. The only difference is, is again, there were some changes so that the um, <clears throat> the defenders couldn't just stand here and shoot onto the point and then pop back in for heal. So they did change that. It makes your attacking a little bit easier because, um, of course, you can... It's hard to explain it, but yeah. The attackers have a little bit easier because the defenders cannot just sort of stand here, shoot at them, and then walk back in, get some HP, and then walk back out and just keep doing the same thing. There is now this, and there's an opportunity for the defenders, or for the attackers to destroy the defenders a little bit easier. So you guys do have the advantage a little bit a little bit now, um, now that the defenders have gotten a little bit of a nerf to their spawn position. Another thing is the spawn does not exist here anymore, but again, there is this area. So if you want to sort of spawn camp, Remember that this door is no longer here, it is always just on these sides, it has been completely changed. So on attack, if you want to send like two people to sort of like guard doors, that is an option. It's not a great option, for certain reasons I won't get into, but of course it is another option. Of course if you're an attacker and you've destroyed most of the defenders and you have sort of a free opportunity to get up here, not necessarily the whole team obviously, but if you have sort of a DPS or... Yeah, no, just basically DPS. Zenyatta would be freaking amazing up here. Just gonna let you know that right now. Zenyatta would be amazing. Because he has so much view of the field. And the orb has, you know, obviously you can send your orb wherever you want to. Just make sure that you don't get completely destroyed by anyone walking up here as well. But yeah, that's mostly just the attacking strategies. And, um, yeah, there's not really much else to it. It's kind of straightforward. This is sort of the, your best option. Uh, we're also going to check around the other side. I'm pretty sure there weren't many changes, if any, to this side, but we are, of course, going to check it out. Um, I think... That was a fail. I think this might have been there the entire time. And, of course, is going to let you get a little bit of cover. It's this little panel here. But that's not important, because no one's really going to defend here, anyways. So I'm going to check the other side. I don't think there have been any changes to this area. No, I don't believe so. So it's still technically a viable option for you to walk through here. And again, it's one of the better options. One of the worst options I've ever seen, really, is unless you have speedy tanks or your Reinhardt really knows what they're doing, don't run down this area. Just don't do it, right? There's so many reasons and there's so many things I, I see. People do this all the time. Why don't you want to run down here? Well... You can see so much at the point, I'm cringing already. Right, so you walk down this area. Your Ryan really has only so much on his shield. And unless he's sort of doing the, the hop skip thing, where I can't really show you right now, but you're holding down right click and then you release it and hop forward a little bit and then you use the momentum to put your shield back up and give you a little bit of boosting area. Uh, a boosted jump, I guess. And then, unless you have a Lucio, it's really just sort of not a great option, because if your shield's down, of course, someone gets picked. That's not great. And even if it's a split second, you really don't want to ever have your shield down when you have six people focusing on your entire team. So going down this area is not great. You want to have as much natural cover as possible when attacking 2 CP. And so that's why I suggest going either on the left, which is still a pretty viable, bleh, 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 viable option. Heading down here is technically an option. The only thing I say is not great about this is that, well, one, you don't have a high ground, anyone on the high ground would absolutely demolish you. Two, it's a confined area, so getting an entire team through here and spreading out without dying is a hard thing to do because you have very little space in here. Your tanks can't really do much in terms of creating space for the rest of the team. So it's kind of a problem walking through here. Your tanks can't really do the job as well as they could be. 
up here, you have to be really speedy. You gotta make sure that you get across and either go down here or you jump down. Make sure you coordinate with your team which one of which of those you are doing, because if some drop down and some of them go down there, half the team is going to die while the other doesn't, and you can already tell which half is going to die by who's jumping down this way. Right. So, just to recap, that's not great. Or I'm sorry, this is terrible. This is kind of bad. This, one of your better options, and this is probably your best option. Well, you can sort of debate which of the two is your best option. Kind of two really, really great options. The reason why this is this could be a better option than this one is depending on if you have sort of range DPS, definitely go up there. If you have close range DPS like Genji and Reaper, definitely go through here. That's sort of what you're going to want to know. And with the addition of the Wrecking Ball hero, or Hammond, I suppose, uh... I mean, there are definitely applications for him, such as, you know, grapple up here. No, his grapple doesn't reach that far. God damn it. <sighs> Grappling over here, getting up to the high ground. He's still decent on the high ground. He's not great, because of course he's a tank, he's an off tank, but my, my point still sort of stands there. Alright, so that's all it is to it. I know I already sort of did the intro thing, saying that's all there is to it, and it's really simple. But there were a couple things I just wanted to cover extra, and... That is it for attacking on Horizon Lunar Colony. Of course, it isn't the worst thing in the world if you get a hang of it. If you get the hang of it. I'm going to take a little bit of practice. It takes quite a bit of team coordination, this, just this map in general. But, really, I'm sure you can do it with enough communication and coordination. But, of course, this is Carson signing off. And, as always, have a fantastic day.